Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Joshua Suluruka here, your host of the Impact Podcast Show. And it is great to see you guys watching. But also, I just want to give a massive shout out to all those that are listening right now. Um, I want to give a massive shout out to all those that listen through Spotify and or uh, the Apple Podcast. And so, yeah, I just want to let you guys know just quickly over, uh, I want to go over our mission, uh, the purpose of the impact podcast show so what we do is that the main aim is to just focus on the one that's all we're wanting to focus on we're focusing on impacting the one because we believe that as we start focusing on you know one person and like impacting their lives then they will be able to impact others so and then obviously go from there to impacting the world so i just wanted to elaborate on that and i'm going to keep doing that in every podcast show that we do and um i truly believe that all the all the special guests that that come on um we'll I, I already see them like really believing in that too so yeah i just wanted to um you know rehash on that and um and yeah and so to let you guys know we're on social media follow us on instagram that's our main platform and uh, we've got facebook we've got twitter and we're also on youtube too so make sure you guys um subscribe to that so yeah so without further ado we're gonna get straight into it um I just want to introduce to you guys, um, William. Um, how do you say your last name, bro? <laughs> uh, How would you, know, you say it? Fine, fine if you want, but nah. Usually people say fine, but it's uh, pronounced Finne. So, yeah, um, I was, I was gonna say Finne, but like I just knew. I'm like, bro. Imagine if I said Finne, and he's like, nah, it's actually fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. You know, in English, it's fine. You know, but yeah, nah. Uh, it's pronounced Finne. It's from my Italian side. I take my mum's last name, and Yo. uh, yeah, I carry that along with me with pride. Yeah, yeah, the man. So, yeah, guys, I, sh- I, sh- I just want to give you guys a bit of clarity into, um, you know, who, um, you know, William is and, like, how I knew of him. So, like, a couple of years ago, bro, and I think you would know already, um, but I actually met, like, William at the, like, at the carnival. Um, I was I was working and, was it in Bass Hill, I think? Yeah, and, Bass Hill. Yeah, so at the Bass Hill carnival, and I was, I was actually on... I think I was on slushies at that time. Like I was working on the slushies. Um, my mom got me the job over there. This is like this is like ages ago. And yeah. um, I remember, I remember at that time you were playing in the Bulldogs comp. Well, like, am I correct at that time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like the Bulldogs at the at the time, and yeah, just was still trying to make it around there. And yeah, man, was working that kind of job yeah. just yeah. Bit of cash on the holidays, so yeah, 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 that was that was actually pretty good, eh, bro? Yeah, <laughs> Sick, man. So, how did you get into it? How did you get into the, the carnival? Oh, I had um, one of my uncles was, was one of the owners of the rides there, so he's like, um, and I literally lived like two minutes up the road, so he, he found out and he was like, Oh, yeah, just come on down, just come work. Um, it's like, Oh, I can just come and work, and like, yeah, <laughs> come work. So just work and get paid. And he's like, Yeah, I'll pay, you, I'll pay, you. and yeah, from there, one thing led to another. And, ended up working with him and um was yeah on the rides to the bumper cars and yeah it was pretty sick yeah that was actually that was actually crazy bro like at that time and um when did you when did you stop working uh for them man i was like a month in it was just something i couldn't um uh sorry something i couldn't handle with with school and getting out too young i had to catch public transport everywhere still sort of catching public transport (laughs) (laughs) now but yeah man it's it's something that I just couldn't, couldn't juggle together with um, school and work at the time. I was still young, so but yeah, still trying to hustle at that time. But yeah, man, that, that's one month in and just had to give it up. Yeah, yeah. true, true. Nah, man, like that, like that was like yeah, that was some really good times because I was thinking about that before I um, before I started the podcast or even just thinking about you. I'm like, how did I know this kid? Like, how did I, how did I know this guy? And I'm like, oh, I remember I was I was working at Bass like Bass Hill and. Like my mom was tight with um your uncle, yeah. Like that was working, yeah. So like they were like tight as at work, and so that's pretty much all. Like the the first time I seen you, which was um yeah. you know which was pretty good, um. But yeah, man, do you wanna do you wanna tell a bit um you know to the viewers and the people that are listening at home, um, do you wanna do you wanna tell them a bit about who you are? You know, do you wanna share uh, a bit yeah. who you are? Yeah. Um. Well, firstly, um, thanks for the opportunity and. Um, my, my name is uh, William Finipayao uh, I'm Tongan Samoan. I come from a big family of eight. I got six or oh, five brothers, two sisters. Um, I'm the third youngest out of the eight. Um, it is a 
bit of a hassle, you know, being one of the youngest. But um, yeah, I, I come from a family of eight. Um, uh, born and raised in Sydney. I was born here as uh, I was born in Bankstown Hospital. Uh, from there, I've grown up in Bankstown majority of my life. Only moved out towards Leppington Ways uh, as we've grown up, and um, yeah, I've just been uh, slowly. Uh, developing here and there with my footy uh, throughout the ranks uh, after school. I've, I've moved around from a lot of high schools mm-hmm. uh, and, yeah, slowly just still um, chasing a dream uh, at the moment uh, in rugby league and currently working uh, two jobs while still trying to do that, um, while studying at the same time. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me and um, who I am. No, it's good, bro. Can you, can you tell us a bit about, um, you know, what you're studying and where you're working at at the moment? Um, so at the, at the moment, I'm working at F45 Piedmont. I work in the city, um, currently living out in Denham Court. Um, so, yeah, it's a fair fair bit of a mission um, heading out towards work here in Yarn Denham. And, um, after, um, what I'm studying as well, um, I am currently studying youth work. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've just um, been trying to get involved more with children, especially um, with our Pacific Islander kids, you know, um, understanding the rates of um, um, this uh, topic, which is suicide. Mm-hmm. That's, um, a lot in our younger generations yeah. and um, it's been happening a lot in my little brother and sister's schools and it's something that you know um, I really want to make a change in and really want to um, make an impact in as a topic of your show man making an impact and stuff like that so I really want to change the, the stigma around all of that stuff you know it's not it's not weak to speak um, especially with our young poly kids you know we're, we're brought up to stay strong and um, there's always good times to break barriers that you know we're not used to so yeah, majority of that youth work stuff is just from my own personal experience. Where I've just like seen kids, you know, they're, they're just so stuck in a in a phase where you know I, I was once in. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure majority of other mm. kids have been in a phase. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all been there. We've all been in a low point where we, you know, you just feel like you can't speak because you're an islander. And um, yeah, I just wanted to study youth work just to let them know, you know, give them early exposure to things that they need to understand. That you know, there's help when you need help. There's opportunity when you want when you want it, if you want it, um, and things like that. So, yeah, that, that's the main reason why I wanted to uh, study in youth work and uh, make a difference in, in areas where I can, you know, impact someone's life and have a say in their life where, you know, I've, I've made a change and helped them be the person who they are and made an impact in the way that I did. No, bro, that's really good, man. And, like, bro, kudos to you, bro. Like, good on you, man, to taking that step because... There's a lot of people out there that don't really um, think like that. You know, they're just thinking, oh, you know, I'm I'm out of school. I'm just gonna go get money. Um, or yeah. I'm I'm just like I'm out of school. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna follow what I'm I'm just gonna follow the dreams that my parents have told me. And yeah. you know, you like you took a stand and said, no, you know what, I'm doing this because I, I really want to make an impact. Like I want to make a big difference. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And something someone's gotta do it. And if um, no one does it, then you know. No one will do it at the end of the day. So it's just something, you know, you want to make a change in someone's life. You know, you got to change yourself and help change, uh, make that change. So, yeah. No, it's really good, bro. No, it's good. It's good. So, like, I want to talk a bit about work um, before we get into the topic. Um, yeah. I know at the moment, like, you know, you, like you mentioned that you're working at F45 and yeah. um, you're also doing, what are you doing after that? Sorry? So you had F45 in bartending, was it? Yeah, F45. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so, so, you, so, you, like, you have two jobs. Now you have nothing. So, what are you doing now, yeah. bro? Yeah. Oh, what I'm doing now, you know, just studying extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, just hearing mum's voice every morning. You know, it's not something I'm used to. I'm usually at the house before everyone wakes up. Um, but usually now I'm just, you know, waking up after everyone, and um, it's good just to, you know, have a little rest. Um, every now and then. Was working really hard for the last couple of months ever since I got my two jobs and yeah at the moment all I've been doing is just you know helping mum around the house and just you know getting that bonding time back with my siblings that you know you just you just don't get to have because you're all too busy working and mm. now there's no excuses um right now so yeah it's just good spending time with my siblings and just mucking around just like the good old days when we were younger just you know mucking yeah, around yeah. And, and playing with mum and dad it's just yeah it's just a good vibe it's funny and it's just something that you always need every now and then, just a little bit of family time. Yeah, it's been great. Um, this little ISO, we've been sweet about it, and yeah, we've just been stocking up on our toilet paper. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I have to come and see you soon, man. Get those uh, discounts for worse. Oh, come on, 
Come on. <laughs> hey, if anyone in any um discounts, just um Oh bro, I should do this, eh? Hey, I should do this, bro. Hey, if any guys want any toilet paper, subscribe. <laughs> do a giveaway, do a giveaway. Give away, do a man. giveaway of toilet paper, bro. <laughs> bro, I love it, bro. I love it. Entrepreneurship mindset. I like it. Get on, man. Get it on. Yeah. It's been great. Nah, the man, bro. Nah. Bro, bro, I'm fully fortunate, man. Like it's a fort like it's a mad honor to have you on here. Um but now we're gonna get straight into it. Uh, we're yep. gonna get straight into the meat behind um why why we're actually having a chat. But yeah, man, um, I want to talk a bit. For, like, I want to talk first about faith. Um, I am I am a faithful guy. Like, I'm yeah. all I'm all about God, and like yeah. he's pretty much the the guy that I go to every day, twenty four seven, three six yeah. five. <laughs> um, and so, but I want I want to talk a bit about your faith, man. Uh. Like, you know, being being a Pacific Islander, like, you know, one of the stereotypes is God. Um, yeah. you know, being 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 first. But I wanna I wanna ask you, man, like what's what's the testimony, bro? Like what what made you have a relationship with God? Like what what like what's the whole story? Do you know what, like could you share that? Yeah, um so yeah, it started from a young age, um like like we all do and um, you know, I was brought up in the church from um literally since birth and uh, coming from a strong religious family, um, my grandpa was a pastor. My brother's now a pastor. Um, we just come from the line of pastors, and and it's something that um you know usually uh, my parents used to say this one saying was if you bring up your kids in the church they will never depart, mm. and um it's something that it's always stuck with us, and it's something that I've learned slowly um, to love and um growing up in the church it was always the best thing because we always get to see our cousins and um stuff like that so. Uh, religion and, and um, growing up into it um, was always something that's been with me from the start and um, having um, my grandpa that I've always looked up to um, uh, he sadly passed when I was born but um, yeah he was he was just really known in um, in our family for being such a wise and religious person um, bringing us all up in it and um, they were really strict on us so each Sabbath um, from Friday because so, um, I'm seventh day um we worship on a Saturday, so I'm um, yep. starting from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. Um, our grandpa, our grandma, our mom, you know, if, if you're playing loud music, if you're, you know, going to the shops to buy lollies, you, you knew that the broom was waiting once you got home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, um, they, they, were, they were on it, like, they, they were fully on it. And um, the, the, the least we could do was uh, sit down and read the Bible and, and, and sleep so yeah especially being Tongan as well um, in Samoan um, back home now our, our country is really religious really about that where, they, mm. um, where days are set aside just for um, church which would be this um, Sunday and Saturday back home and um, yeah things like that so yeah faith is really pretty much in, in my blood and how I was brought up and it's something that I personally uh, rely on and it helps me be happy as, a, as an individual so yeah, man. Yeah, no, bro. Like, I love, I love how you, I love how you mentioned about the Sabbath because, um, like, I, I remember, like, I've only just started to realize how important rest is, um, <clears throat> and I know, like, it's a biblical thing. You know, the Bible talks about, like, sorry, the Bible talks about us, um, you know, making sure that you guys rest, um, on like on a certain day, but for me, it's like, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll just kick back. But like, I'm starting to realize, like, it makes sense to rest. Uh, it makes yeah. sense to rest not just physically when you're playing footy, not just mm. mentally when you're studying, but also spiritually when you're you know speaking, yeah. like yeah. having time with God. And I feel like this is the best opportunity eh, to yeah. to spend time and, with and God. I, yeah, hundred percent. And I feel like it's a sign as well. You know, you, you have no no other, you have nothing, pretty much nothing to do at the moment. And I think this is the chance where you get to you know finally sit down and regather your thoughts to you know. Uh, focus on God in, in the spare time that we get. Um, it, it is little time, so making the most of it, everything, and just studying it, um, even if it's um, saying a prayer, you know, mm. something that people don't um, usually do, saying a prayer from the start of the day from when you get out. It's something that I, I usually struggle with. Um, I love being totally honest. Uh, yeah. uh, prayer, and especially um, giving thanks, you know, just for waking up. We're not promised tomorrow, mm. um, Yet we plan things for tomorrow as if we know it's gonna occur. You know, yeah. it's something that um, you know, we it's, it's just faith. We live off faith. Um, you know, and you, you think that you're planning for next week as if you know you don't even know if you're gonna be there next week. So it's things like that that help um that help me stay humbled and grounded. Uh, religion is 
something that's massive and um yeah man it's really something i'm thankful for yeah no it's good bro it's good man i got a question for you this is yeah. a random question it's all yeah. based on faith but i got a question for you bro now, knowing that you're a faithful man, right? <laughs> you're a faithful guy. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, tell me tell me this, bro. What's your like 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 who's your favorite Bible character and tell us why? My favorite Bible character yeah. would be um from one of the stories that I read in the Bible is um his name is David. You know, David and Goliath. You probably know the story of David and Goliath. Yo. He, he's David. He was um he was the underdog in the story. So um basically he, he the army people didn't want him in. So they they um, they didn't believe he had what it took um, to fight. And um, this one day when they were fighting, um, they, this, um, the army was scared to fight the lion. So they were scared to um, go up against him. And um, the lieutenant was like, who, who will stand up? Who would stand up to take on the life? And every soldier stood back and um, here's David with his little slingshot. And mm. it, it shows a lot in the message um, that story. You know, all he had was a slingshot and a rock. And um, David took down the life the day he slayed the life. And apparently from what we've been told, when around that time, the life wasn't just no oversized human. It was mm. like a real massive human. Like he was just really big. And, um, yeah, the, the message I get from it is, um, you know, no, um, no matter how many people go up against you, no matter how many people doubt you in your abilities, that you, you cannot do something or you, you will not do something, you know. Um, with that, you know, I just really, um, like, like David Forty did, you know, he had faith in himself and he, he had faith at, at the end that he could do it. Um, he believed he could do it and, um, yeah, he just really pushed through with what he wanted and, yeah, man, at the end of the day, he got what he wanted and his also in um, his side of the army, they, they ended up winning that war. So, yeah, man, um, he has to be one of my all-time favourites. No, it's really good, man. And, like, the reason why I asked that is because, like, there's there's always a reason why people like certain people. Yeah. Um, especially in the Bible. Like, for me, like, my favorite, my actual favorite Bible character is actually my name. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I love, I love, um, I love, like, Joshua as a character because, like, you had Moses, right? You had Moses, yeah. Yeah. And then you had Joshua, and Joshua was the second in command. And then yeah. Moses, when Moses like left like he was able to like carry the the weight of the leadership and then was able to lead the people in the promised land yeah and so like that's the reason why i like it not just because it's my name and people might say yeah. that all the time they might be like oh you only like it because it's your name i was like oh it's not yeah. just that <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but it's actually mean, because like the there's part. actually a mad story to it that like i i had seen um that i see as like real beneficial in my life and i'm guessing mm -hmm. that it, um, you said David, yeah. Like David was yeah. your, yeah. I'm guessing it's like there's something within David that resonates with you. Like that's oh, what yeah. I'm, that's yeah, what the, I'm hearing. Yeah, the the thing that resonates with me is the that um you know no matter how much people doubted him, no many yeah you know, I mean so no matter how many people you know uh, said he couldn't do it and said he wasn't good enough, like he still fought back. And the thing that resonates with me is that the the criticism he took and mm. still. Forward. And, and it's something that you know um, goes really well with me. No matter how much like someone would criticize or someone <laughs> would take, like I, I I goes through one year, goes out the other. Like with yeah. me, in that you know, if I want it, and people say I can't, you know, I'm just going to continuously push. If, if it's something that I want at the end of the day, and it's something I have faith that you know I, I will get to, or I will work towards something that you know yeah. my goal is something that I've always wanted. It, I will get there. Uh, regardless of you know it's it's just the determination that he had and um the determination that resonates inside of me that you know shows um a few similarities that you know uh some character traits that yeah, i really take from him that um yeah just make me as a person um for who i am yeah. no it's really good bro it's really good man so no no we've like spoken a bit about you know our favorite characters and why and you you've shared a bit about your testimony um i want to ask man like what's some practical like principles um that you use um in your life from the word so obviously in the word we have you know certain laws and certain things that we've got to do as christians um like what is it that that you do uh what are some practical principles that you do uh, some practical ones would be um so there's one thing that says love thy neighbor and um Regardless of who you are and what you do, um, for me, I'm a, I'm a loving person. If, if you know who I am, I'm a real 
understanding, forgiving, and loving person. So, like, regardless of what you do or who you are, um, that's something that I, I continuously carry um, with me. Um, understanding that you know you love thy neighbor, throughout all of it, and uh, making sure that um, yeah, with that, that's something I always carry, and it's something that my grandpa's always um, said to my mum and them, and it's something that we've always carried along with us. Um, yeah, just loving thy neighbor as as you would love yourself, and yeah. It's pretty much something that I always try to carry in um, basically my day-to-day life and, you know, treat everyone with the same respect that you treat yourself. So, yeah, man. Yeah, man, I, I love I love how you shared about that because, um, you know, we live in a world that is so filled with, like, negativity. Mm-hmm. We're living in a world full of sin and um, there's a lot of people out there that don't see that, like, they don't see it for what it is. Like, they don't see... Yeah. Like the Bible when it says love thy neighbor, it's like they don't actually see it as like, oh, you don't realize that you actually got to love the person that you were just about to stab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That you were just about, to, or the person that you just gossiped about, that's probably the yeah. person that, um, you know, God's going to tell you to, you know, forgive and you yeah. love on him. It's like, yeah. but the cool thing is, is that it's it's something that is so uncommon. So when you actually see people uh, do it, like when, yeah. say for example, you know, old matey took all my toilet paper, right yeah. he took yeah. all my toilet paper and i'm like yeah, it's fine you can take it like for them it would be so unordinary <laughs> yeah like it would be so unordinary for uh for me to actually accept but i try to take it yeah take it like it's fine it's, so yeah. it's, not, it's not a social norm anymore it's not it's not something that aaron's used to aaron's used to it's either, it's either that or we're fighting over it. it's not something that you know you're some, aaron's so forgiving and understanding about and you know um Right, yeah, hundred percent. They didn't. No one's used to it anymore, and it's it's good that you know there's, people, there's still a few people out there that you know restore humanity and uh, faith in humanity, and um, yeah, pretty much all of that. Yeah, no, it's really good, man. And so, speaking of the world, like I've just spoken a bit about the world. We live in a world full of sin. Um, mm. The question I got for you, bro, and I think it's pretty it's pretty deep, bro. But like, how do you actually live? like like jesus right like the whole goal is to live and, you know be a model just like jesus but how do you actually like how do you actually live like a jesus-like lifestyle yeah like, uh, knowing uh, that we live in a like, v- like a very yeah yeah. yeah yeah that is a real difficult one man yeah, especially you know uh, we, we do live in a lot of sin we're born into sin and um what's it called with that you know there's, there's always going to be uh temptation everywhere you go and I, I guess the, the difficult part of it is you know just staying firm in, in your faith and with me the way I try to do it is you know just you know with everything in life try to stay faithful to my um, my beliefs and um, just try and and um, you know be like him by you know uh, bringing cheer uh, to you know everybody around me and uh, trying to stay happy and positive regardless of the situations that, you know, you're in, no matter how serious it is, you know, staying um, happy and always pushing out that love to anyone and everyone. So, yeah, man, if you, if you know me, how I am, I'm just a real loving person and I just, I muck around a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. for, for me, it's it's something that, you know, it's, it, for me, my character, um, I just love making people happy and love um, cheering up people and, you know, always being supportive in the ways that I can. Um, but yeah, man, with, with living like um, like him, you know, it's a real difficult task to do, especially in the world that we live in. Um, you know, you're tempted by sin everywhere you look, from at home to out in the shops to workplace, and um, it, it's really hard to to try and get out of, especially when you're when you're into it. And um, but yeah, one, once you do start to begin to walk in the, um, the steps of Jesus, you know, your, your life doesn't get any easier. It just gets twice as hard. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's something that, you know, you've got to really understand. And it's something that I'm still struggling with. Um, yeah, we, we all struggle in our, our walk and our faith. Um, but with that, you know, it's just something that, you know, no one will know about God and um, he will continuously help us here if we need it and if we want to accept it at the end of the day, you know, you need to surrender your, your all. And for me, um, just, you know, under, for me, um, understanding that there's always a need for a greater being in my mm. life is it, something that gets, um, makes me real grounded in, in everything that I do and um, from sports to work um, to the decisions I make in life as well. So, yeah, man. No, it's really good, man. And, like, the next question I got, man, is... Uh, 
Uh, it's a question that like is going to lead into our next topic that we're going to talk about. Um, yeah. But yeah, knowing that you're a Christian, bro. Knowing that you know, like we're Christian, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, how do you actually manage yourself while like actually playing in a rugby league system? Because you would know, um, you know, I think it was last year, um, if the Israel Folau saga, like that, yeah. that was like a real pinnacle moment of, um, you know, Christianity, like mm. being at its like rawest, like yeah. being so raw, uh, to the point where we had so many people getting offended, like yeah. both in the church and outside of the church, like yeah. crazy man. It's been, yeah. like, I've had like crazy conversations with like just like random people talking yeah. about. Yeah talking about like what Israel Folau did it's like oh do you believe it do you don't but um yeah just to use that as kind of like a basis like how did you how do, how would like how do you actually manage to you know manage yourself as a Christian while actually being in a rugby league system as opposed to you know oh no using the example of like um what happened with Israel um, yeah, with that, um, for for me personally, um, with everything, you know, if it says in the Bible, um, it's something that you just got to go against. And, and the, the Bible is is really, um, it's intimidating. If, if yeah. you read it and you understand that, you know, that the Bible, it, it's it's quite insulting if you, you, if you read it. Because the only reason why, though, it, it's insulting in the way it is, is because you understand that, you know, you're doing wrong. You understand that. It is wrong in a way that you, you you choose to believe on your own beliefs instead of understanding with such wide vision about what you're reading. And um, when when people understand that, you know, um, for me with, with what he said, um, me personally, I, I agree. Um, just because if you if you read the Bible, you know, you, you, if you really study it, um, you know, that there's always um, parts in the Bible where he fully explains everything about it and. Um, how we should walk as people and um, with that um, you just got to really study because there's heaps of stuff that you know go against it and go for it as well so at the end of the day it, it, you can't rely on man as well so mm. uh, personally for me with everyone that's you know getting angry or getting happy about it just go back to where the answers are all out and um, really study it for yourself before um, people end up judging you around because um, yeah man it, all the answers for everything um, with that is in the Bible so yeah, man. Um, for me personally, with and and growing up in the footy with religion as well, um, when that did happen, um, we did get a different different looks here and there from people, just especially being um, from Tongan heritage. But you know, in the Bible it says, um, you know, uh, people will hate you um, when you you know you stay firm in my name and um, people. But um, as he also said, sorry, he also said, you know, they, they once hated me first before they hated you. And yeah, um, um, with that, you know, just staying firm, you know, would you rather, you know, um, be embarrassed on earth where, you know, um, you don't have long to live or live happily in, in eternity in a golden mansion um, that he, he will end up preparing for you where you are always happy and regardless of um, what you do, you will always be aware of everything that he loves you eternally and endlessly um, regardless of the decisions you make and um, he will always um, guide you every step of the way. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a choice that you always have to weigh up um, in, in this world especially, you know, it's either you know, clout or, you know, um, living by his word and um, staying firm for eternity instead of eternity in the other place there, yeah, man. No, it's good, man. Like, like I appreciate you sharing because, um, you know, we're living in a time now where, um, you know, a lot of people may, you know, become confronted, you know. Yeah. I know that if I ask my, you know, other boys that question, they'll probably push, off, push it off and be like, oh, I don't know if I want to enter it because, like, yeah. you know, it's recording, like, it's going to be yeah. over out there. But, but I think it just goes to show your character, man. Like, it just goes yeah. to show that, like, you're firm, um, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, yeah. And also, also more, most importantly, bro, that you're firm in the word, which is which is something that I, I appreciate. Like, I love seeing men who are just really firm in the word and they stay in their ground and they, they don't compromise, yeah. which, yeah. which I feel like you do well. Yeah, it's something that I'm proud of. You know, it's not something I'm going to be embarrassed of. You know, um, I'd rather please please the man above than anybody of this earth at the end of the day. You know, um, from dust we were made and from dust we shall go back. You know, at the end of the day, um, people's opinions don't matter. Um, you know, you just like David, you know, people's opinions never matter to him. Um, at the end of the day, he had one job and one decision. He wanted to be a part of it. And regardless of what everybody thought, 
um, he just had one goal set and he, he um, pulled through with it. So, yeah, man, just at the end of the day, living day by day for, for God or living like him as best as you can um, and applying, um, you know, a God-like lifestyle into your life is something that's always going to keep you steady. And uh, for me, it keeps me steady um, day by day. Yeah, no, no, it's really good, man. And so now we're gonna just gonna move into the next, the next topic that we want to talk about. And this is something that I'm passionate too, which is pretty yeah. cool. Um, and that is uh, rugby league. Like, well, I just want to touch base a bit on um, the rugby league stuff. So, bro, can you just share a bit about, um, you know, how you actually got into footy? Um, we'll just start way back, bro. Way back when you were a baby. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Funny story. Okay, so like, um. What's it called? So, uh, I come from. So yeah, majority of my brothers are all, all. So they're all older than me. I only got one younger brother, and um, I wasn't playing footy until the age of eight, nine. Um, when I first wanted to start playing, and um, when I first wanted to start to play, um, uh, I see my brothers playing here and there. My little brother was playing. I wasn't playing. Um, there's this one day where my little brother was playing, and um, what's it called? He he took a run up and he. Like first game, he got a cut in his knee, like a little just little little slash down his knee, and he, he um he stopped the game, like he literally stopped the game. He went up to the ref, he's like, the "Ref, ref, give me a bandaid, my knee's bleeding," and um <laughs> that, and, and oh, he copped that much backlash from my parents when he came home. He's like, "You don't do that," and like you know, living as an islander, you know, you don't do that stuff. And um yeah, from there, I started teasing my little, <laughs> I started teasing my little brother. <laughs> For uh, say a couple of years about it, um, yeah, kept teasing you for a couple of years about it, and this one day he's like, "Why didn't you play then?" And then I was like, "Okay." And then I, I told my dad, um, I told my dad, "Oh yeah, I want to play footy." And my dad looked at me, he's like, he, he looked at me, he's like, "Nah, you don't want to play footy." And um, my dad's real st- uh, strong-minded about this stuff, and um, I was like, "No, nah, I want to. I like I actually want to play footy." And um, he, he looked at me, he's like. He looked at me as like, you know what it takes to be a footy player and stuff like that. He gave me the talk about, oh, you, know, yeah. you know, about about the stuff that you got to put aside and, you know, because they, they wanted me to be really educated and I really wanted to play footy at the time. So um, uh, juggling which decision I had to choose from, I chose, I chose footy. And um, with that, uh, my dad gave me the, you know, if I ever see you cry when you take the <laughs> run, uh, he, he gave me the, the big chat about, you know, uh, being a man and when, when you play. He said, um, yeah, he said that stuff. He said, if I ever see you cry, I'll show you something to cry about. And from, <laughs> that, day, from that day on, you know, <laughs> from that day on is something that's always kept in my head and yeah. um, something that I've always remembered and is the first ever memory of me wanting to play footy. So, yeah, if it wasn't for that, you know, allowing me. Um, to play, then I probably wouldn't have played. But yeah, thankfully and uh, God willingly, I, I was able to play. And from there, um, I played at Bankstown Sports, moved to St George Dragons um, in, in the Kemba areas, and um, from there was able to hop into a Bulldogs development squad. Um, and then I went to Parramatta Hills to try out my luck over there. Um, I, I played for Guildford, and then um, this this way religion helped me massively to get a contract at the start. So. Um, from there, when I, um, what's it called, when I went to Guildford and uh, Parramatta, they missed, uh, they called me and they said, um, what's it called, we want you in our development squad, um, we want you, we want to see how you go and um, how you develop. Uh, from there, I was training with their development squad and um, just in the mix. Um, and then I found out that they play on Saturdays. Um, and mum yeah. and dad, um, at this time, um, church was really, really massive. My mum and dad were so strict on it. Um, it was something that they just couldn't look past. Um, and, and like, even to this day, like, if, if I have a game on a Saturday, my mum and dad will not come and watch. They, they will not um, they will not break the Sabbath. The best they do is they pray with me before I go to any game. And um, it's something that they're really strong in. And um, it's something that I'm, I'm really proud about. You know, people say, oh, um, your mum and dad don't come and watch. Why? I'm like, oh, you know, because uh, we have church on Saturdays and it's something that I respect massively. Um, you know, and they always put God first before anything, and it just shows the sacrifices they make. They'd rather, you know, um, praise God than see their own son play, which is something I, I am totally proud about, and um, I'm thankful that they, you know, put God first because at the end of the day, they reap the blessings and um, stuff like that. So, um, carrying on um, with that, um, I got my first contract with Primary Hills because of God. Uh, uh, they they said um, 
So I told them, I, I got to leave. You, you play on Saturdays. I can't do that. And this was at the time where they, you, you, you're not allowed to play in a different comp and we contracted to, to one comp as well. Yeah. And, and they said, they, they sat me down and they're like, oh, okay, then we're just going to have to let you go. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, they were like, why though? I was like, oh, because you just play on a Saturday. Um, my family's really strong with that. We can't play on Saturdays. Um, they're like, okay, yeah, because of, cause of religion, we'll let you go. Um, two weeks later, they call me back up. They're like, oh, we're, we're thinking we can source something out with you. We can keep you in that comp, but um, keep you contracted here. And I um, told my mum and my dad, and the, the first time I've seen them cry so so much about, you know, just the contract and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, it was, it was heaps good. It was, um, yeah, all oh God, God willing. I um, ended up getting my first ever contract through Paramount Eels, and uh, from there just went to... Uh, Went up a few ranks all the way up to under 20s and um currently at 20s and reserve grade right now and at the tires and um not sure how what what's going to go on now but um yeah man that that's pretty much how i've made my place into the rugby league scene so yeah it's been real sick of a ride and yeah, it's been real cool but honestly it'd be really cool if we had a documentary of you bro <laughs> that'd be gangster man <laughs> i wish man i wish but yeah, man, um, it, it's been such a great ride, and um, yeah, everything's happened for a reason. Um, and I always believe that everything else happens for a reason, and um, the way they they happen. So yeah, man, it's been great. Loved every bit of the journey, and I'm uh, still making my way through. So yeah, man. No, it's good, bro. It's good, man. And like, uh, I overheard you. You're talking about cup, right? Like yeah. Eastern Reserve grade, yeah. At the moment, is that where you're at, or? Yeah, um, was lucky enough to. Um, so I had an injury filled year last year, um, just full of injuries, played a few games for under twenties and um unfortunately we, I, I couldn't stay there apparently. I had to move to West Tigers and um I started in the reserve or uh, Jersey Flake side, so I started pre season with them and slowly just um didn't know anyone there, so it was easier for me to work hard. It was a new environment. Um and yeah, once once I got there my main goal was to just not be in um, under twenties at the time. It was something that I just like for me, it, it was okay to be there, but it was just something I didn't want to really be in as a player. I really wanted to make my, my steps up. I really wanted to work hard to try and make it higher and um, slowly did, um, was um, working hard and was fortunate enough to get selected to, you know, play in the reserve sides and have a um, first grade trial match, which was something I was so, so proud about. I had my mum and dad there, my, my cousins and uncles and aunties, they waited, um, they waited, so there's 80 minutes in a footy game. They waited 70 minutes to watch me play the last 10 minutes. Got to love Islander families, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, man. The whole family there in the corner watching me warm up. Like, yeah. But nah, man. It was heaps sick. It was funny. But um, yeah, it was, it was an unforgettable experience just playing those 10 minutes. And um, yeah, having my family there especially is something that just made me so much happier. Um, having them there is something that I'm not used to. And, Seeing them there gave me the nerves, and yeah, it was so good. Yeah, no, nah, bro, it's good, man. It's good. I I love how you know you you shared a bit about that. Um, but you know, knowing that you're talking about like the cup, you know, Canterbury Cup, like we've just got like intel that um the comms comms cancelled. Um, yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling about that, bro? Yeah. Um. A bit down about it. Um. You you would be um especially in. Yeah, this is pretty much my first preseason that I've, I've completed without any injuries. Um, oh, come on, bro. Ever since Harry Matthews. So, yeah, man, it was really something else I was really looking towards. And um, But, yeah, um, like I said, everything happens for a reason. and um, It just could mean that I, I could be in a better place for next year and um, get ready um, and come back even better and stronger for next year. And, um, yeah, man, uh, I am gutted about it, uh, no doubt. But, um yeah man there's there's nothing you can do about um about the situation so it's something that i'm not i don't dwell on and i just move on and you know carry on with the next thing that's happening in life which is you know just finding stable work and helping mom and dad around home yeah yeah no bro that's actually pretty good bro and yeah tops to you bro like you're you're still i can see on instagram that you're still you know training or hopefully training (laughs) Um, yeah. 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 Training, no, 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 training, 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 <laughs> training, 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 <laughs> training, 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 
got my brothers, um, majority of my brothers back at home now. So, um, yeah, we have a little setup in the garage at the moment and we just thought trying to stay active while we can in this ISO period. And, um, you know, it's always important to stay active and not eat too much. And yeah. On that right. free, 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 free. Gotta <laughs> that watch all your calories, bro. Yeah, man. Gotta watch them. It's hard living in this house, man. Nah, oh, it's actually... Did you- <laughs> it's actually easy my family is majority uh, more vegetarian and so yeah it's sort of easy i only eat takeaway anyway so <laughs> it's, bad. it's bad i gotta get out of it <laughs> but yeah man oh shit. yeah oh, true yeah. bro true true so <clears throat> yeah man i was doing a bit of research on you and uh you know i just pretty much done the simple type in your name on google and bro the actually actually the first thing that popped up was um there was a, actually a, a a newspaper article on you bro and um i think it was around you know 2017 at the time where they posted it but i think it was talking about your 2016 um season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 so fingers crossed if I, like, am I correct? Yeah, is that? Yeah, 20, yeah 2016 season. Yeah, so, um, I don't know, to me, uh, I would say 2016 is probably one of the top years for you as a footy player. Yeah. Um, you know, you, like, in, in the newsletter, it actually mentioned that you scored the winning try um, for, for New South Wales. Um, yeah. Is that is that all factual, bro? Or yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was gonna double check, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check from the like from the from the source, bro. I'm gonna ask him, you know, say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So, um, yeah, so Will played in the New South Wales under 16s um, team for the State of Origin, Kern and Razor. And, um, yeah. bro, the question I want to ask you, man, what was so good about it? You know, what was so good about that year? Oh, that year, man, it was, it was almost everything. Um, we had one of the best uh, young sides, uh, for Hard Matthews. Uh, we took it out. Um, we took out our state champs. We took out our, our um, national champs in, in New South Wales as well. And uh, to top off that year, was able to be um, selected for um, New South Wales last last May. So was able to um, be amongst the mix. And it was one of my prime years. And um, still today, you know, haven't had anything going on um, well for me at the moment. But you know, that was that was one of the best. Um, moments that that 2016 year had a couple of the boys um that are now even playing first grade at the moment like um dylan brown stefano and all of them you know we um even even boys covering up in other other teams that we had um in that team like matthew joe and everyone you know we had a couple of boys that just um we just had a great side and from there everyone's just you know gone their own path still playing and still smashing it out and um for me man that was one of my best years that i've ever had to date and uh, my best ever experience in footy. So yeah, man, uh, that 2016 uh, moment um, was the best. Um, but also, um, yeah, it was all because um, my grandma was in hospital at the time. So it was something that really uh, pushed me um, to my limits and something that I wanted to make her proud because, um, yeah, I was showing her my games after after each um, game. I'd go and show her my game. And even though she didn't understand much, she was pretty old and um, she just liked smiling and, her favorite team was Bulldogs, so um, when I gave her Parramatta gear, and she she took it. Um, everyone's like, "What the hell?" Because she her favorite team since young was the Bulldogs, and it was just so good to see her put it on and uh, make her smile in, in the moment that, that she was in and the state that she was in. It was, it was something that really made me proud. So, yeah, man. Yeah, bro. No, it's really good, man. Uh, it's really good that you you know like that your grandma, um, knowing that she was in hospital, like really you know like you use that as a motivation and i think a lot of us uh, uh pis do that um you know we like whenever anything is going on in the family uh, yeah. we we usually use that as a as a stepping stone bro so no nah, man that's pretty good bro and um you know i in in my life i've i've gone through something similar to like you you know played harrimats um played sg uh me at the moment i'm currently playing in the sydney shield comp but um, looking at it now, man, like there's always like some sort of drop that happens. Um, and and like, any career, it might be an injury, it might be like a setback, uh, it might be I don't know something's happened that has gone out of control, and like we don't have control of that. So my question to you, man, was like, was there a, actually a setback that happened for you? And if there was, could you kind of share that? Ah, uh, yeah, there, there was um, two massive setbacks to send me back, just like mentally and physically so at the end of that 2016 uh, 16 season uh, my grandma ended up um, passing 
And um, with that, it, it just shattered me wholly. Like I didn't turn up to training. Um, it was something that just, you know, was really close to my heart and something that um, I just couldn't, you know, be, be to um, believe that she was actually going. And um, from there, um, I, I ended up uh, snapping my ankle in, in a school game a couple of weeks later. Um, yeah, ended up snapping my ankle and I just felt like, you know, everything was gone to, you know, just trash, everything just out the window, all that hard work, all that, that one year of, you know, being so happy and proud about everything. And I guess at the end of the day, it happened and it humbled me. Um, it brought me back down and, um, you know, it just um, made me realise the opportunity I have and um, how much I really wanted it. Um, three years later, still striving for it. So, mm. yeah, man, that was the biggest setback for me was just breaking my ankle. Um, so when I was 15, I broke my ankle as well. So coming back in that 16 year, it was making it made me so happy. And Nick, and then fracturing it again, it just really brought me back down. And um, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, is it really something I wanted? You know, those 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 thoughts that come through your head where, you know, is it really worth it? Do you really want to you know, go through this over and over again? You know, when you're doing those, you know, those Malcolms and you're just like, is it really worth it, man? Is it really worth it? Yeah, but legit, yeah, man. Bro. Especially those 1.2K runs. Oh, man. bro, don't even talk about that 1.2, bro. <laughs> oh, four minutes ago, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, man. It's moments like that where you really question it and um, I guess it's just staying strong mentally and um, then again, faithfully as well, you know, it, it's really massive and it just keeps me grounded and keeps me happy and... um. With that, it's just uh, made me who I am and um, continuously just striving to be better each and every day and uh, putting smiles on people's faces. So, yeah, man, it's been great. No, it's good, bro. Thanks for sharing, man. And so, you know, knowing that you, like, you were, like, you know, the, like, in 2016 was, like, your best year and then coming into 2017, it was, like, oh, snap, like, what's what's going on? It went to, like, for me and then bang. Yeah, Bro, so from all that that happened, um, like from 2017, you know, getting injured and then you know not not being able to play, um, bro, tell me, man, tell me, uh, what's what's one thing that you've learned? What's one thing that you've learned about yourself as a person through um, your setbacks? Just the the comeback, to be honest, the the you know the um, resilience in in you know staying really sorry, staying really strong. Um, mentally and just uh, understanding you know at the end of the day it's something I've already put my foot in um, I can't take my foot out and um, it's something that I, I had to just keep continuing and um, just you know understand the lifestyle that you could live if you choose this and the lifestyle you could live if you chose that so yeah for me it's always um, for me just thinking ahead and uh, making choices before um uh, anything actually happens. So at the end of the day, for me, um, I always thought about the good in every bad situation that that's occurred for me. So yeah, with breaking my ankle, I was pretty down about it. But then um, I always thought about the goods in it and um, how I'll come back stronger with a stronger ankle and um, think about uh, my future and, and things that it will lead to if I, I do stick with this dream. So yeah, man, um, it was always the comeback and and just staying strong minded about everything that I did with it. Yeah, bro, no, like, that's really good, man. And um, thanks for sharing, bro. Like, thanks for sharing that. Because I, I truly believe that there's one person out there playing footy that has potentially just got injured, um, like, obviously before the comp finished, <laughs> um, that, that are probably thinking right now, like, you know, like, what like what, like what, what, what can I do now knowing that I'm injured? And I, I guess that, you know, just what you've just mentioned now, giving them some tips would uh, benefit them. So, yeah, man, no, thanks for sharing that. Um, the, this is um, the last thing that we're going to talk about then I've got something special to share at the end um, we're actually going to talk about um, cultural clashes now Yo. this is something that like bro we can talk this for ages man I can make yeah. a series out of this right but <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible yeah. Um, but yeah man I feel like you know you, like you're you're starting to be a, a, a youth worker and yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned that you want to make an impact. What exactly did you actually want to do uh, in terms of being a youth worker? Yeah, for, for me, it was um, more so working in schools with these young um, PI kids. You know, they, they, they're not exposed to, you know, a lot of things into this world and, and unfortunately exposed to the majority of the bad things of this world. And 
Um, with that, um, I just wanted to, you know, um, help expose them to opportunity and understanding that there's more to life than, you know, game lifestyle, um, even sports lifestyle. There's there's more to, to Islanders than just sports and, and stuff like that. It, it, there's, more, there's more to education that we could uh, focus in and other things um, around that area. So, like, for me, um, I, I took a step into acting. Um, I had a little... Um, step into it to see how it is man that there's so much that you know that we're, we're not unaware of um i i took a step into acting and i, I did an episode where um for a tv show which is um uh, it's called the in betweener um number two um it's an american series just sitting in this episode um i earned around a thousand five hundred just for sitting in that in that one seat and doing what they wanted me to do. And it, it's something that, you know, you don't really have to work hard towards. Um, it's something that you can just go um, turn up. You get paid for this. Um, you may get paid in a month, but you end up getting 1500 And it's something that, um, you know, you need, you need to understand your opportunities and choices uh, with with that. So being being a PI as well, we're, we're always, look, um, you know, majority of us are looked down upon just because um, apparently we're just athletes or, or just footy players or, um, you know, um, so-called everything. And um, for us, we, for me personally, is something I just want to change that stereotype of us. You know, we're not um, just um, footy players and um, that that really low term of us just being fobs um, in, in this in this place. Um, for me, it's more so focusing on helping kids understand the, the importance of education and, and where it could lead them in their future from, um, choosing a lifestyle of being in a game and um, and choosing the lifestyle of, you know, focusing on education and it's um, stuff like that, you know. Um, I know people don't have the choice to not choose to, to live in, in gang lifestyles. I mean, if, if that's the way you got to go, um, prompts to, to those people that actually go through with that stuff and, you know, it's the only way to provide for your family at the end of the day. But um, with, with that, if, if you have a choice to choose between the two, um, you know, my, my best... Um, guess an option for you is to you know choose the right thing choose educated path you know your parents didn't come from where we come from just to you know see you get hurt on the streets or see you you know go and hurt somebody else if if um you know if it's not the life that you're brought up in and brought up for um like best thing is you know and you're going to get a lot of backlash for this um as well so mm-hmm. you, you need to understand that you know um at the end of the day your, your, your family is the main goal and the main priority in your life to, to look after. And um, if, if that's the way you got to go, um, by all means. But um, if it's not, you know, there's always opportunities in education and um, other lifestyle things that you can uh, exceed and excel in that, you know, there's always better opportunities and easier places to go. Um, yeah, like with the acting stuff, you know, there's so many islanders that, you know, you just record each other muffing around at home. Mm. I mean, you can get paid for that stuff. It, it, it's stuff that's so crazy that, you know, we're just not exposed to, we're not aware of, and um, I guess that's where we lack information in um, understanding that there's easier stuff that we can, you know, instead of just always working in construction like majority of us do, um, there's always better lifestyles. You know, we don't always have to wear orange high We don't We don't always have to wear high We can wear suits if we wanted to. We can do much better things if we just put our minds towards it and, you know, um, yeah, just slowly um with that especially um with this one's for the footy people um you know um all, all, all the footy players you know if you end up signing a contract you, you get your uh, TEA so it's like a territory education allowance um with that they, they pay for your school fees and it's something that um I really recommend everyone to abuse the hell out of um every time I've gotten that I've abused the hell out of it I've, I've gotten my my school laptop from it I've got an um, education um, courses paid for. So um, through footy, they've paid my personal trainer's course uh, for my cert two, uh, three and four. Uh, they paid for my teacher's aid certificate. So I can work in schools as a teacher aid and they're currently working um, to pay off my youth work on one. So, yeah, so, man, um, massively for the all the young youths, young PIs out there. If you, um, I never understood at the young age of when I was 16, but I'm, um, yeah, if you do get that in your contract, 100%, please abuse the hell out of it. You know, it's free free education that you end up paying thousands for, you get for free. So, yeah, man, that's something massively that I just want to put out there for them. 
Yeah, bro. No, it's it's really good that you're sharing that because, like, I personally see, because like I'm a I'm a well-being officer at a primary school, so mm. like I'm starting to see the the side effects of you know the certain gangs and mm. you know, things like one four and you know twenty one district and all that stuff. And I'm not I'm not putting them to shame. I'm just you know speaking truth out of what I'm seeing from from being a or well, let's say a well-being officer at a school. Mm. I'm starting to see that there's so much uh, you know so much exposure from the kids. Mm. Um, you know these these are young kids that are watching, like you know videos of you know yeah. guys wanting to stab each other, shoot each other, and you know at the end of the day, like you know it's on their parents. Like their parents should be you know watch you know watching on them yeah. and um, parenting them. But I'm not going to comment on that because I'm not a parent myself. But what I am going to mention is like you're right, bro. Like there's there's so much clashes as as a poly, and also being you know want to be tough and you know want to try and be. The, the biggest dog in, in, in the in the yeah. town. But when really it's like we we have an opportunity and it's cool, bro. It's cool that you're doing what you're doing, man. It's cool that mm. you're wanting to be a uh, a youth worker so then you can actually impact kids, um, especially, you know, just the, the polys too. Uh, yeah. Because we're, we're coming into a season, man, if like we don't, if we don't stop uh, or if we don't look at ways to prevent these kids from, you know, getting into the gangs and trying yeah. to be ruthless, then bro, it's going to be too late, bro. There's going to be more more than like there's gonna be like more gangs happening um, yeah and so yeah man no, it's really good bro it's really good that you shared about that and um my question to you man is like what's uh what's the encouragement that, that you would like to share for all those out there so for all those kids out there that are listening to one four listening to like i'm not gonna lie man like i love these like these drillers like these drillers yeah. are pretty cool like yeah. actually, i love the beat bro um, I love what they, you know, what they're doing, but it's just like I think it's more about how, how yeah. they're doing their stuff. Um, yeah. I do see there's another way, but you know, my my comment maybe or my opinions maybe like irrelevant to them. Yeah. But, but my question to you, man, is like, what's what's some encouragement for for all those out there that are listening, um, you know, to the to all this stuff or you know going into construction? Like, what's what's something like what's an encouragement that that you could possibly share to them right now? Yeah, um, for me, it's, it's it's just more so you know think think about your um your family. I mean, um, yeah, there's no hate against any of them. Uh, at the end of the day, they're doing what they got to do to provide for their family, and, and if it works for them that way, it works for them that way. Um, it's not always gonna work for everyone. At the end of the day, you gotta you gotta weigh up your options and um, you gotta understand if it's not gonna help your family. Um, I don't see um, you know, you don't see the point in doing what you're doing. So, um, with that, man, uh, if, if if you want to be a jailer and you're good at it, be a jailer. Like if, if we, we uh, Polynesians, we, we're talented in so many ways, from music to uh, dancing to football to um, education and sports. You know that it varies in so many ways, and um, we just need to excel more and um, become more exposed to understand that you know instead of working against each other as well as the majority of the islanders do, um, work together, uplift everyone, help everyone get up together. You know, um, we're only as good as we all are so you know um, one person puts our name uh, our names down as islanders to shame we all get put down to shame and it only takes one of us to bring all of us up so um, with that man um all i can say is you know you just always think ahead um one thing i i always live by is i, I think two steps ahead of my decisions that i make mm. and i always think is this going to be uh, not only good for me is this going to be good for my family um, is this going to help my family is this going to help me in the future um, is this something really stable to have for till I'm 60, till I'm 70? Um, and hence why I'm doing youth work. I could do this to an old age. I could do personal training till an old age. I could also do teacher's aid to, till an old age. And um, it's it's something that I, I, I like to back myself in um, more so um, and um, just have that um, stable income coming um, regardless if I get older or if injury does end up happening as as um, football is always a plan B for me um, and, and plan A is always my education side of it so um, and, and with everything um, with, with these kids and um, stuff uh, listening to this stuff and wanting to be like them uh, my biggest advice is you know there's, there's no problem in listening to them there's no problem in that it's just the, the choices you make um, they make an impact on not only who you will be or where you will end up um, also they, they make an impact on um, your family as well and um, how, how your family end up seeing you and um, stuff like that. So, yeah. 
Yeah, man. Like, I, I, I truly believe that that what you like, what you're doing right now, like you're setting yourself a platform right yeah. now, and I feel like there, there's a lot of people out there that are struggling, you know, to you know set aside a platform. Um, mm. I've got mates who who are regretting, you know, listening in class, um, at mm. school, um, and like really thinking about not like not thinking about going to uni, but also like more so like being more serious. Like they should have been yeah. more serious. Um, in school because now they're like living in a regretful state uh, yeah. at their job like I, I hear so many bro countless people just tell me how much they hate their job and I'm like you know what find a new job then <laughs> you know or actually look at things that you actually enjoy and that's something yeah. that I, I do and I can see that in you bro um, yeah. yeah which is something that I'm really 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 like it's, bro, it's so good to see you know more Pacific Islanders like not just people, but Pacific Islanders in general, yeah. uh, you know, stepping into other avenues, especially youth work. I think yeah. one of the things that a lot of Islanders don't see is that they will be the best at youth work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like it will be a breeze for them, bro. It's like you already look yeah. after kids when you're growing up, so it's yeah, just gonna be after them when you're six, man. Nah, so. legit, man. <laughs> like you, everything that you've done, like when, like when you were growing up, you're gonna get paid for it. <laughs> like that's yeah, pretty much the way I see it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's so true. Like, you know, you, Islanders just have that thing, you know, that the connection with majority of people and we're really understanding people that you just can understand what you're good at and um, something that you love um, and, and something that you do, you got to implement it into work and understand um, the love you have for it um, and why you want to do it at the end of the day. And that's massive for us. Islanders youth work is something that, you know, we could make a big change in and in saying that, you know, we have Islander kids that are one of the highest in percentages with, um, our rates um, at mm. the moment. Um, so it's, it's sad, but, you know, we, we can make a massive difference and um, we're, we're not, um, we're only limited to what people tell us we're limited to. Yeah. Um, I think we, we just need to understand that we're, we're much more than what Aaron says we are as Pacific Islanders and um, we're much better than what they think we are as well. Um, at the end of the day, um, we only push up each other. They, they won't push us up at the end of the day, um, others, and um, we're just going to stay proud of that and keep working and pushing together. Yeah, bro. Now that I, bro, spot on, bro. Spot yeah. on. The man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's really good, bro. It's really good, bro. Yeah. But yeah, man, like, we're going to start wrapping up now. Um, And one of the things that we, we want to talk about, uh, one thing, one of the things that we're wanting to bring into the Impact Podcast show is that we're all wanting to focus on, like, personal development. Like, we're always wanting to figure out ways that people can, you know, become better, that they can grow and be the yeah. best version of themselves. So um, knowing that you're like F45 trainer, uh, yeah. you're working as a bartender too, which bro, I fully applaud you, bro, you know, working two jobs, but also trying to pursue your career as a footy player and also studying as a, um, you know, potential youth worker. Like you've got all these aside, man. And so like my, my, my question to you, man, is like, what's, what's your view? Like what's your view on personal development? Like, What's your view on actually wanting to be better than where you are now, growing, um, and you know, really investing a lot of time in yourself to be the best that you can be? Majority of um, all of my decisions are based on my future family. So um, you know, um, growing up in the way we did, we didn't have much. We we went, um, we didn't have the best of education, um, and and we didn't have um, you know, we had the best lunches of migraine noodles to school. You know the norms and the ravens with the holes um <laughs> we, we grew up with all of them and you know the uh, ravens with the holes that make your socks have holes as well oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, that that was the main um focus for me and it was something that um i, I never wanted my kids to go through as yeah. as much as um you know putting them through something different might bring them up in a different way but um just you know uh for me it was always future goal for me just to um give my kids something that they uh, that I didn't have, um, and and not that I'm not thankful for the way I was brought up, but more so um, work hard for them um, and and give them the things that you know I never did, and, and see how much more they cherish the things that I I never had. And um, majority of that stuff is just to be stable and be able to you know travel with your 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 big islander family, mm. not, not having to you know go on, go off on that you know five year, wait for that five year mark, go on that one family trip. And then wait for another five years go again. For me, it's more so like uh, you know I want to go places with my family every month, every now and then. You know, um, is one thing that I, I I always remembered in primary school is when the teachers like, 
what did you do for your weekend? And um, I hear, and they'll say, oh, we just went to Fiji. We just, <laughs> 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 I, just stayed, I just stayed home. I stayed home in my room and, and freaking tried to study my timetables. And yeah. went to like, oh, we just went to the Central Coast and, <laughs> <laughs> and just saying stuff like that, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it's materialistic things, but it's something that, you know, uh, for me that, I just I just want to do it as as a personal thing for me um uh, for my family to to give them things that I wasn't able to have and um just for for my own personal development I just you know want to work hard for me as a, as a as an individual and um let people know that we we're, we're more than just a footy player we're more than just a Pacific Islander we study to teach we study to become a youth worker um we're personal trainers as well we can do things bartending you know there's there's heaps of things that um People say we can't do, but we can um, if we want to do it. And it all comes down to the want at the end of the day. And for that, um, yeah, that's pretty much um, my my all on um, personal development is is pretty much the reason um, it was my future and my future family and and what I have to provide for them and um, for my my family in general. So yeah, man. You know, bro, that's really good, man. I love how you saw, like I love how you spoke about family um, yeah. and. Even thinking about the future, you're focusing on the future. You're like, no, nah, I'm doing this for my future family. And yeah. I love that, bro. I love that so much because I think that will encourage people out there who are thinking about like, oh, maybe I should do this. It's like, well, actually look at like, you know, what's going to happen when you do start a family yeah, yeah. or when you, stu- like, when you do start a career on yeah. like the, the repercussions that they're going to feel. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. oh, man, it's really good, man. Yeah, and saying that as well, I see so many people that, you know, end up, accidentally or um they, they end up having you know a family at a young age and then you know i see footy players that could have been the best footy player um end up having having to to work in a in a factory job like not that a factory job is bad but like you know if it, it supports your family it's something that you got to change your dream and try and focus on you know you know providing for your family that you, you end up having to provide for so for me it's something that i want to excel in outside so i can still live my dream be happy and provide for my family as well at the same time. So, yeah, it's something that um, I, I really urge everyone to think about is is, is your future. You know, you don't don't think in the moment. Um, think about mm. what your um, decisions will make, um, the impact it will make on your future, and um, the the decisions that um, it'll make on having a family as well. If if that's something you'd want, or if um, something you'd end up doing so yeah it's always um thinking two steps ahead like, like i said and um, it's always uh thinking in that mind mind and state of um yeah just thinking being better um and wanting to be better and continuously being better each and every day yeah but now very so good man i love i love how he's like you know you spoke about that and you actually place that within your your personal development which is cool man so uh, this is the last question that we're gonna, um, we're, uh, that I'm gonna ask, and then we're gonna finish off. And so, bro, the last question um, that I want to ask for you is, um, you know, what's what's some encouragement that you can um, share, or some tips that 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 you truly believe will help those out there, um, you know, in the, either in footy or like you being a PT, um, just in life, man. Like, what's something that that you can share from your personal experience being William Finney? Um, <laughs> Like yeah, so then they can grow as a person. What's what's something you can share to them? Um, yeah, for me it was it's more so um, so uh, with 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 um, Asian era. So for me, it's understanding understanding your worth, your value, and your place that you have on this earth. Um, if you understand how much worth you have, you understand that no one can ever put you down. If you understand your um, like the value of, of who you are and um, what you provide to everyone around you, you understand um, your your place on this earth, your purpose. Um, it all keeps you grounded, and it keeps you understanding that you know you have a purpose to do certain things. Um, and and it's something that keeps me driving. So as an individual, for me, it's um, uh, understand my worth, my value, and my purpose here. Um, with all of that, um, also with with that, um, just keep. Um, being better. So, you, as as you're saying, how, what what could I say? Um, it's always find a positive in every negative. You know, if something doesn't go your way, still be happy. Um, get over it. Um, if something goes wrong, be happy. Get over it. 
Um, it, it's something that I've always lived by. It's something that, um, for me personally, that's made me the person I am. Um, if you like, for example, if you, if you forget something, there's no, there's no, um, there's no reason why you should um, be down about it because you forgot it. There's no, there's nothing that's going to change it. It's done. It's done. Um, just move on. Be happy. Continue your happiness because um, at the end of the day, if you cry about something, you're only going to cry about it for. <sighs> A day or if something bad really happens you're not going to be crying about it in five months so why waste your happiness in that really down moment you know always believe to be happy and always want to be happy and it's something that's made me the happiest person in my life so i've always been happy and just always um been up about everything regardless of the situations that's why i always muck around and <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, Can I have yeah some fun in this world man yeah you have to you have to but yeah, man, um, that's just my bit of advice. You know, always just try to be happy and always see the positives in every single negative that comes your way. Yeah, no, it's good, bro. Man, I was trying to say thanks, bro. Thanks thanks for... Nah, it's good, man. Pleasure like, it's an honour to have you, bro. It's, a, nah, it's an honour to have you on. And, bro, I'm keen, I'm keen to get you back on, bro. Like, I'm keen to get yeah, you back on, bro. Just fun. like everyone else that I've interviewed um, the, the past few weeks, bro. Like... Man, you guys, like, but you guys, all you guys, every, every every special guest that I've put on here are already making dramatic changes, and I truly yeah. believe that you guys are going to go even further, um, yeah. which is which is cool, bro. But, yeah, man, like, that, 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 like, that is all that we have, guys, everyone that is watching and are tuning in. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in, especially for all those that actually tune for the whole thing, because it is, it is pretty long, and we're looking at other ways that we can benefit those that... Um, that their attention span is very short. Uh, for those out there that have a like you know short attention span, um, you know we're looking at other ways that we can serve you. So yeah, so that's all we got. I was gonna say thank you for tuning into the Impact Podcast Show. Um, yeah, look at yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, guys, make sure you guys follow us on Instagram um, and Twitter, um, the Impact Podcast Show. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um and yeah um bro how do how do they get connected with you? Oh through my social media uh Instagram I'm not sure yeah click <laughs> and subscribe in this little box <laughs> now Jake um yeah um William Finney uh William Doc Finney on Insta and um Facebook same exact same thing for everything so yeah if you ever need a chat or anybody ever needs help with any um. You know anything that that comes their way uh, if you're just struggling a little bit um yeah always here to help and always uh willing to help out wherever i can yeah man yeah yeah sweet so yeah guys we'll leave it in the the links down below for those that are watching youtube and for those that are listening to this just be sure to check us out on um instagram that's our main platform and uh yeah we'll make sure that you guys can check out uh william finney <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. <laughs> but yeah, bro. Thanks, bro. Thanks for chatting. Thank you guys for watching and listening. And we hope to see you guys in the next one.